guys, it's Emma, and I'm back today for you guys with another video. And this, oh lord, this is a discussion video that, reading the title, is going to be about the Three Dark Crown series by Kendar Blake. I've been needing to get stuff off of my chest, so I will be... reveling in spoilers. It's high fantasy. It has a lot of complex characters. I don't want to make this comparison, but I almost have to. But it is kind of like a more friendly Game of Thrones. There, I said it. But this is going to be kind of just like a run through of the series, and then we are going to get to the bulk of the video, which is going to be Five Dark Fates. Let's get into the video. First book! of the Three Dark Crown series is Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. The best book in the series. This book, I've read it twice, and it, oh, it's amazing. I gave it five stars. Everything about this world is thrown at you at once in this book, but it's done so in a way where it's almost chronological to where you can, where you can keep up. It's a lot, but not, but it's a lot thrown at you at a reasonable pace, if that makes sense. So basically the premise of Three Dark Crowns is you have this island called Fenburn and every... and this island is ruled by a queen and this queen has to give birth to three triplets and they all have special powers. They can either be an elemental, they can be a naturalist, they can be a poisoner, they can be um, an oracle, or they can be war gifted, or they can be giftless. But these three girls grow up, um, in whatever house, depending on what their gift is, and they have to fight to the death, almost. When they turn 16, they have a year to kill each other, and then the winner, or whoever, I say winner, but really it's whoever's left alive, gets to be the queen crowned. So we follow three sisters, Mirabella, Arsinoe, and Catherine, and that's the storyline for Three Dark Crowns. Those are the people that we follow, or those are the triplets that we follow. The folktales and the lore surrounding this book that was introduced in Three Dark Crowns was utterly fascinating. Er Mm. Another reason why I gave this book five stars and why I love it so much is because it has two plot twists. Two plot twists in one book. One minor thing that I don't think gets talked about enough with this book, even though I love it, um, that thing with Joseph and Mirabella? When Mirabella saves his- when Mirabella saves his life, um, that little thing that they have, that, that, that little, uh, tryst that they have, um, on that beach that, um, they perform coitus, and, uh, it's a little problematic because, um, first of all, Joseph is half unconscious, and Mirabella is half unconscious too. I have a video on One Dark Throne. Um, so I'm not gonna say that much. I read it once. I... I believe I gave it two stars. Um, it's my least favorite book in the series. It introduces a new character, Amelia. We don't stand. My dislike for Jules intensifies in this book. Jules annoys me. I feel like she's way too involved. She's too nosy. She's too protective. One thing that I did appreciate that One Dark Throne did was it enhanced Billy's and Arsenault's relationship. I loved that. We stan Billy and Arsenault in this household. That is the one thing that I give One Dark, one Dark Throne credit for. We got to see Billy and Arsenault's relationship blossom. Oh my god, it was beautiful. The last thing I'm gonna say about One Dark Throne, you guys, is three words. Joseph could have lived. The third book in the series, Two Dark Reigns. Um, I read this two times. If I were you, if I were any of you, I would not recommend reading Two Dark Reigns 
or I would not recommend reading any of the Three Dark Crown series books on audiobook, at least not on Scribd, because I read Two Dark Reigns on audiobook the second time, and it was dreadful. I have the biggest gripe over how the woman just pronounced everybody's names, and I know that's a really stupid thing to um, gripe over. So just how the narrator did male voices. Whenever she would do either Peter's voice or Billy's voice, it would be exaggeratedly deep and bass, almost to the point where it would remind you of how a small child would imitate a man speak. Nothing against the narrator in particular. I have no hate towards her. I'm just saying I would not recommend listening to Three Dark Crowns on audiobook. At least on Scribd. I don't know if it's the same on Audible, but I know on Scribd wasn't my cup of tea. My dislike of Amelia grows so much. The way she treats Jules is borderline toxic and I feel like a lot of people aren't ready for that conversation but I'm ready to have it. Jules has stayed on the island. Mirabella and Arsenault and Billy have left the mainland. They're gone. Kath Catherine, as I pronounce it, is the queen crowned. Now the mist that surrounds the island and used to keep the island safe is now almost rebelling in a sort of way and is now coming onto land and killing people. So we have that antagonistic force and then we just have Catherine who is honestly a ditz. Sorry, I said what I said, I meant what I said, I said what I meant. Then we have Amelia and Jules. Jules is, you know, she has the Legion curse and Amelia rides on this and she wanted to make Jules the queen. And not only Queen Jules, but the Legion Queen. So this whole image of her being a queen was built on the fact that she was Legion cursed, right? Um, cool. But the problem is that she, Jules, does not want to be queen. Amelia decides to trick Jules, basically, into showing off not only her naturalist ability, but her war gifted ability as well. And Amelia's just standing so proud and she's like, oh, buck up, Jules, you should be grateful because now you can actually do something worthwhile. Who are you? Just anything with Julianne Malone. Amelia had to have a hand in it. And it had to be something regarding the queendom or something of that, something of that degree. And it made me angry because it honestly made it seem as though in Two Dark Reigns, the only reason that Jules even engaged going after the crown was because Amelia made her. Amelia put her in a put her in between a rock and a hard place by literally tricking Jules into showing her war gift and her naturalist gift. It shows me that Amelia doesn't care about Jules. Amelia just cares about what Amelia thinks is best. We don't stand Amelia. So we get this cool um, almost dual perspective type of thing when Arsenault starts having dreams about one of the dead queens, Daphne, aka Ilian, aka Roxanne. It's a whole mess. If you know what it is, then you know what it is. And then we find out how the mist is created when Ilian sacrifices herself because she is a powerful elemental and she sacrifices herself and throws herself over the cliff and makes the mist. And now that the mist is, like I said before, rebelling and killing people now, Daphne's ghost tells Arsenault that because a strong elemental created the mist, only a strong elemental can undo the mist. So in order for the mist to be undone, a great elemental has to die. And it's hinted at that it's going to be Mirabella that's going to die. Heartbreaking for me, but logical to the story. Keep that in mind. And then Peter literally has an exorcism. Liter Peter tries to get the dead queens out of Catherine by exorcising them. And it almost works. Until Catherine relents and says no. And then the dead queens take control. And then they make Peter, they grab him 
and they make him bleed through his eyes and his ears and shit, and that's when the book ends. Five Dark Fates. Um, I read this once. Probably won't read it again. Going back to when Peter was literally bleeding out of almost every orifice in his face, right? Um, no, he didn't die. He's just in a coma. He, you know, throughout the rest of the book, he is completely useless. Just, and he's there for comedic relief. It honestly would have been better had he died at the hands of Catherine, the woman that he loved, and then that would have given us so much more character growth for Catherine, and it would have given her more drive to be angry at these queens if they were the reason that Peter died. The violence in this book definitely increases. You've got the mist literally killing everybody, um, and then the attack on Bastion City where they leave literal pieces of people all over the city. <sighs> Speaking of the violence, again, spoiler alert, um, Mirabella dies. The main solution to one of the main antagonistic forces, i.e. the mist, got stabbed and then she got pushed over a cliff and she died in one page. Now the reason why I have a problem with this is because, remember what I told you to keep in mind about the logic about Ilian creating the mist by killing herself and then, you know, throwing herself off a cliff and then Mirabella was hinted at was going to have to sacrifice herself by throwing herself off a cliff and therefore undoing the mist, right? It makes sense. One equal but opposite reaction, right? It's logical. Um, so, you know, Mirabella falls off the cliff and she dies, right? Lame, but, um, you know, that stops the mist, right? Wrong! The mist does not stop. So then it's like, okay, well then wait a minute, what did that whole thing, the entire thing with Daphne and Arsinoe and Ilian, what did that have to do with anything now? Like that whole arc that we just went through in two dark reigns that thing is null and void now it makes no logical sense as to why you would kill off a main character first of all and why you would kill her off in such a lame way why you would kill her off in one page and why you would throw away a logical solution and a cemented solution it seems that the author only th killed Mar Mirabella for the sake of killing off a main character. The final battle, you know, between Catherine and then the Legion Queen's forces, that was honestly kind of lame. Any Game of Thrones fans, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say um, that battle between, you know, all the forces at Winterfell versus the White Walkers. Yeah, that battle? Um, poorly executed, and honestly there for shock value. Shock value played a part in this book. Change. My. Mind. Another thing that pissed me off was Catherine's and ultimately the Dead Queen's demise. Um, and the Miss Destruction. Because apparently for some reason Catherine's death and the Dead Queen's death was tied to the Mist, which I guess you can kind of make an argument for it, but still, it... Wishful thinking, in my opinion. Catherine falls off the roof. The mist comes, kills her, and devours the dead queens inside of Catherine. And bam, that's how Catherine dies, the dead queens die, and the mist is destroyed. It seems like such a cop-out. Your three main antagonistic forces were all shot out in one go with Catherine falling off a roof. Really, sis? We all know the Matched trilogy was a mess. Um, but the ending of Five Dark Fates honestly reminded me of how Reached ended. Book three was, you know, starting up a rebellion. This rebellion is going to give us a change and it's going to change our government. It's going to give us a certified ruler that is stable and actually capable of ruling over this country equally and diversely. By the end of this, there was no stable government. Jules wasn't even, a, like Jules, we never even got certified evidence that Jules was even queen. 
you're telling me that you hyped up a rebellion for the last two books of this of this quartet. So half the quartet, you hyped up a rebellion about a coup, basically. And at the end, you're not even gonna finalize it? Am I going crazy? Like, am I the only one that sees a problem with this? Or am I the only one that sees a gripe with this? Because eh, there was no concrete government and no concrete ending either. What would have made the ending so much more interesting would have been if, I don't know, if Mirabella, Arsinoe, and Catherine all teamed up against Jules, the old queens against the new queen. That would have been spectacular. Best to worst, in my opinion. I gave three dark crowns, five stars. I gave two dark reigns, I think three stars. I gave five dark fates, three stars, and then I gave one dark throne, two stars. So overall, I was really looking forward to this series after I read Three Dark Crowns because Three Dark Crowns was so complex, just genuinely an amazing start to the series. But then one dark throne and then two dark reigns and then five dark fates came in and it just went downhill so fast. And it honestly left me so unsatisfied because I was so confident that it would be one of my favorite series of all time, and it's just not. In all honesty, this may sound completely contradictory to what I've, you know, been ranting about this whole video. I do recommend the Three Dark Crown series. I really do, because riding off the wave of the first book, I think you really could get through the other three. But that's up to you guys, but I'm just saying I honestly had a generally good experience even though the ending left me personally unsatisfied. I hope that other Three Dark Crowns fans can rally to this video and we can have nice discussions about this book, about this book series down below. The premise of it was insanely well thought out. Was it well executed? 65% of it, I honestly believe, uh, no. A healthy 75% of it was executed extremely well. It just left something a little bit to be desired. So guys, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.